Hello everyone! So, this is going to be a different video than the ones you are used to. If you have been active in the 3D printing community and haven't been living under a rock for the past year, you have definitely seen the rise of Bamboo Lab. Originally with a not so budget friendly but still incredible X1C, and now with a new P1 line that has absolutely destroyed the mid-range category. And it's one of those printers that we have here today. This is the Bamboo Lab P1S. This printer is essentially a P1P with an enclosure and an auxiliary part cooling and enclosure fan. But how much do those small changes affect the printing experience? Well, after a month of use, I'm here to talk all about the good and the bad that this new entry to the P1 lineup has to offer. So, there is no denying that this printer is fast, stupid fast. Compared to the venerated Prusa Mark III that is sitting here next to it, it is in general almost three times faster. And while that might not sound like that much, imagine you need to print a part that takes three hours on the Prusa and one on the P1S. You can get through three prototypes on the Bamboo in the time that it would take the Prusa to print just one. With this huge increase in speed, you really put the word rapid in rapid prototyping, and in a lab setting like this, it is one of if not the most important aspects in a printer. But speed does not make a printer alone. Another very important aspect is reliability. So, is this printer reliable even with such fast speeds? Well, in a word, yes. In more words, very much yes. In general, when I put a print on, I can walk away and expect to have a good result, and that is the case 95% of the time. This reliability and cloud connectivity has cultivated a really bad habit where I send a print from home and forget about it till the next morning. Now, this is something that I would never see myself doing with a printer and would definitely not recommend, as normally you should never leave a printer alone unattended, let alone started when you are not in the same building. But for some reason, I have found myself doing it more and more with the P1S and so far I haven't had any issues other than the one print failure that I stopped when I checked up on it with the integrated webcam over the bamboo cloud. In over two months of very extensive use, I can count the amount of print failures in one hand, and that is no small feat for a 3D printer, and it is more than makes up for the extensive calibration before every print. So, you have a fast and reliable printer, but does it make good quality parts? Again, yes! Even at three times the speed, this printer can produce parts that are almost indistinguishable from those of the Prusa Mark III. Now yes, running a printer at this speed, even with all the calibration and input shaping in the world, it still can cause some small artifacts that pop up here and there. But honestly, it's not even that big a trade-off considering the speed at which this printer can pump out parts. I mean, look at these benches here. One took 21 minutes and the other one a full hour, and still, you can almost hardly tell them apart. I honestly don't think there is much more you can say than that. One more thing is that I would like to praise this printer for is the out of the box experience. From the time that we opened the box, the printer was already up and running in less than an hour. Following the setup was really simple and there were no parts that I would describe as confusing. It was all straightforward and pleasant, except for maybe the small cable for the LCD that took us a while to tuck away, but other than that it was a very enjoyable experience and the first prints were already proof to what this printer could do, both speed and quality wise. Lastly, I have to mention the differences that this P1S has over the older P1P. Firstly, while the enclosure has the obvious advantage of being able to print materials that require it, it also makes the printer a whole lot quieter. Not quiet compared to other printers, mind you, but it is definitely bearable compared to the P1P. The new auxiliary fan also cools the printer much faster, which lets the P1S print at faster speeds than the P1P. Lastly, the active carbon filter makes printing filaments like ABS much cleaner considering it filters out most of the toxic fumes, and also means that less gas like styrene makes it to the printing room. Now that we have sufficiently praised the P1S, it is time we talked about some of the shortcomings that come with this type of printer. First and foremost is that printing parts at these kinds of speeds makes them significantly weaker. But why is that? Well, there is a very well made video from CNC Kitchen that I will link below about this exact problem, but the gist of it is that these printers print so fast that the hot end can no longer keep up and get saturated and that results in worse layer adhesion and thus reduced strength. Now, of course, this can be solved by reducing the speeds or more appropriately the volumetric flow of the material, but this kinda defeats the point of being able to go so fast. 
so every user has to decide if strength matters more to them than speed and tune the printers accordingly. Now, don't get me wrong, tuning the printer to have the parts perform as normal still does not make this a slow printer by any means, but it's a thorn on the side of such a fast printer. Next nitpick I have with the Bamboo Lab printers is the poop. Now, while we can all laugh at how funny it is that our printers now essentially poop out material before every print, we should note that it can get really wasteful even with no material swaps. To be honest, I don't see the reason why the printer has to extrude material before every print. Someone could argue that it's to prime the extruder, but I thought that's what this line here was for. If not for that, then what is the purpose for the filament waste? And the need to keep a bucket behind the printer to contain the extruded filament? Now yes, you can change the G-code to remove all the pooping with single coral parts with no change to the printing process, but then that begs the question, why is the default setting to waste filament? While a minor inconvenience, it is an issue that I believe this printer could do without. Next, I would like to talk a bit about the Bamboo Cloud. In my opinion, the Bamboo Cloud is one of the best features of this printer, but could also be its biggest downfall. It allows us to do amazing things, like with almost no special setup, to start and monitor a print while we are in another country, and much more, but the blade guts both ways. Like any cloud, this one comes with all the common negative aspects, like the fact that we are completely reliant on the Bamboo Lab servers to be up for us to use our printers. Now, I know that there are ways to print without it, but it really feels like Bamboo is obscuring these ways and is pushing for all their users to use the cloud. Other than the reliance to a company which could flop any day now, there are also serious security concerns with it. For one, you are basically giving to a company access to your home network without knowing their honest intentions. Also, any print that you post goes through their servers, which while it may seem harmless, it could easily become an issue if in the dystopian future they start not allowing prints like gun parts and other models which they consider dangerous. Lastly, the webcams inside the printer go to their cloud and there is essentially no one stopping Bamboo from looking at the feeds. And let's not mention the incident where people's printers started printing on their own in the middle of the night due to a server error. What if next time there is an error that disables thermal runaway and starts heating the hot end or the bed with no limits? Now yes, this sounds nearly impossible, but you can never know with technology like this, and only time will tell how it will age. I bet if you told people 5 years ago that their printers would start printing by themselves at night, they wouldn't believe you then either. Finally, one last thing I want to add is that after 2 months of extensive use, the printer has started squeaking. Now yes, with a printer this fast, I expect problems like this to appear, but not 2 months in. Thankfully, all that appears to be wrong is the belt, and loosening it, moving it a bit and tightening it will fix the issue, but it is concerning that a problem has already appeared that early into the printer's life. I think that's all I had to say about the Bamboo Lab P1S. In conclusion, while the negatives may have seemed like a big deal, I want to say that knowing what I know and being asked if I would buy the printer again, the answer would be a resounding yes. Now, yes, the strength problem has nothing to do with the printer itself and more with the laws of physics, and a few changes like the removing the filament part at the beginning and showing more love to the land users would definitely be welcome, it must be said that this printer has been nothing but a joy to work with and is a true generational advancement and a kick in the nuts to the 3D printing industry that we really needed. We used to be in a race to the bottom with every company trying to make the cheapest functional 3D printer and now we have entered the race to making printers faster and faster and with Bamboo being a true competitor to Prusa, I can only see this as a true win for the industry and for every 3D printing user out there. Thank you for watching and if you enjoyed this video I hope you leave a like and subscribe to see any future videos like upgrades to the Tesseract, future printer builds and maybe a few more reviews like this one if you enjoyed it. That's all for now, thanks for being here and goodbye!